G'day, I'm Angus Stewart, Doctor of the Dirt, and today I want to show you how your household can get involved in composting. It's an alternative organic waste disposal method that's easy to do and incredibly rewarding. Did you know that approximately half of the household waste you throw away is organic? Currently, many people rely on valuable council resources to come and take that organic waste away and put it into landfill, where it breaks down to create methane, a potent greenhouse gas. It can also create landfill leachate, which potentially can escape and cause water pollution. Why not keep that organic waste at home, where it can be recycled into rich fertiliser and mulch that will feed your garden and allow you to grow your own food. Compost is formed when microorganisms and earthworms feed on organic matter. As they digest it, they chop it into smaller and smaller particles until you're left with a really fine black material called humus. It has a wonderful earthy smell Let's take a look at how to set up your compost bin. Position your bin in a well-drained spot, preferably where it's going to get a bit of sun to keep it warm. In the base of your compost bin, garden prunings are perfect. The next ingredient is some good, rich garden soil, or in this case, I'm using a mature cow manure compost. Water that well, and your compost bin is now ready to use. Maintaining a healthy compost bin is easy, but there are a few important things you need to know when getting started. When composting, it's always important to keep in mind the Adam principle. Aliveness, diversity, aeration and moisture. Aliveness, your compost bin is a living creature. It's full of microbes and earthworms that are doing all the heavy lifting to break down your organic matter. Next, diversity. As with all living things, diversity is the spice of life. Feed your compost a wide variety of materials for richer compost. Prunings, kitchen scraps, fallen autumn leaves, lawn clippings, and always follow the golden composting recipe. For every addition of food scraps, add the same amount of chopped small woody twigs and leaves. Next thing is aeration. When you're using a lot of kitchen scraps in your compost bin, it can get a bit wet and smelly. The answer to that is to maintain an aerobic environment inside the bin. So using this special aerating tool, you can get right in and just remember to mix, mix, mix every week or so, and you'll get plenty of oxygen down in there. Lastly is moisture. Every week or so, it's a good idea to just grab a handful of your compost and give it a squeeze. You should be able to just get a few drops of water out, a bit like a well-squeezed sponge. Another weekly operation is to add about a teaspoon of worm farm and compost conditioner to sweeten the mix and stop it becoming too acidic. Remember to keep that moisture up every week. Finally, a compost blanket to keep that moisture in. If you're using a single compost bin at home, you can always harvest a bit of mature compost right from the bottom of the pile that is ready to use and sprinkle on the garden. If you're using two compost bins at home, leave your full compost bin to mature for six to eight weeks. Start a second bin for your continuing supply of fresh food scraps and garden waste and then rotate the bins as the mature compost is harvested from your oldest bin. Once you've got your mature compost, I love using it as a potting mix to grow some herbs and uh, edible greens. And I love using it as a mulch around some plants that need a little bit of tender loving care. Thanks for joining us in our tutorial. Happy composting.